You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We get to continue our international series today, and we head to the Dominican Republic. Very yes. excited to share this story with you. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. So we're headed to the Dominican Republic. Today, we get to visit with Deaconess Caitlin and Seminarian John Carlos Ramirez. Uh, they are serving there and... Uh, I, well, serving and learning yeah. as a seminarian. So thanks so much for joining us today, Ramirez family. Thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. Yeah. So tell us uh, about uh, coming to the Dominican Republic, the path of uh, that, that brought you to the DR and um, what life is like for you there today. Yeah, so I was previously serving um, as an LCMS missionary with our work in Peru. I was there for about five years, um, and that's where I met my husband, of course. And then our move to the Dominican Republic was really instigated by him and his desire to study in seminary. So I'll let him tell you a little bit about that. So the seminary program, we have here uh, four years to study, and the same time that we have the study uh we have a plan for a bigger like we have uh time in the many churches that have here in santiago or in dominican republic so every seminar seminarians are assigned to stay in the church um they have his practice uh with the pastor um preaching um visitation and many things like that uh to do that on on the church so both of you were in Peru originally. Uh, what is the what are the cultural differences? A lot of times, I think we might think, oh, it's it's if it's South America or or Caribbean, it's it's it may be a similar culture. But what are the cultural differences between Peru and the DR? Yeah, the the first difference, um, Peru is kind of it's a high culture, and so there's lots of social norms um, and kind of unwritten rules in society that you have to know in order to function well. Um, it's very easy to offend a Peruvian if you don't follow those cultural norms. And so when we first got here, we were asking all of the Dominicans and asking people, okay, what do we need to know not to do so we don't offend anyone? And they're all like, what are you talking about? You'll never offend a Dominican. Um, so people are very relaxed and laid back here, very easygoing. Yeah, many people will say like, well, all Latinos is the same or in any countries is the same, but uh, we have a lot of shock like here in Dominica, more for me and for Kaylin. First, when she come to Peru and then we both go to the, stay here in the Dominican Republic. So it's a difference more for culture things um, for, I don't know, it's like, I can do that uh, in my case, like I can do that in Peru because I will have some problems or something like that, but Here's like, okay, you can do it. Or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think another example related to that um, for us too is that Peruvians, um, because they are more of a higher culture and an older culture, they're very proud of who they are as well. They have an identity, you know, they have a past, they know their roots, um, first coming from the Incas and, you know, all of that tied to the land and their religion there. And then, you know, the Spaniards and being the first who were settled and the history there. Domin in the Dominican Republic, and um, I feel like there's a bit of a loss of identity that it's kind of what's the new thing today and people don't remember their history and it's very easy to to change and follow after something new. They have, uh, well, they have a culture of Tainos to have the Indians here in the Dominican Republic, but more for the culture here in the Dominican Republic is more with like, I don't say like it's the same like uh, Puerto Rico. But it's have some things for you for United States, I think. More than in Peru. So I'd love to hear about the the ways that you're given to serve in the Dominican Republic. And uh I, I know that includes being a student as well. Um but, but Caitlin, tell us uh, more about the ways that you're given to serve there in the Dominican Republic. 
Yeah. Uh, the first thing I would say um, is being a mom and having my family. Um, and that comes first. And, and I include it in my missionary service because for a lot of people, it really is kind of a, a surprise or they don't have a good example of um, Christian and biblical motherhood. And so when I go to the church and I serve to do something, I have a baby on the hip and a two-year-old trailing along to help out. And it gets to be a great ministry thing to talk with people about how we teach our children the faith, um, how they can help and be involved in sharing the faith with others. Um, and it's often kind of a surprise. And I, I have a lot of conversations with people about that. Um, in more of my more traditional, you know, these are assigned work things that are on my call documents. Um, I work with, uh, I work in two congregations here, um, with the women and children in both of those congregations. And it, it's one thing that's really nice about the work here is that the church is a little bit more developed on, as the mission goes than what it was in Peru. So in Peru, I did a lot of the stuff. I was the, you know, on the front lines doing it. I taught Sunday school or I planned events and organized mercy projects. And here I get to um, organize the church members so that they can do those things. I've got a really good, great group of ladies uh, at the congregations who work alongside of me. And instead of being the one who teach Sunday school myself, I get to work with them beforehand so that they understand the, the Bible lessons, can find law and gospel in the story, can figure out how it points to Christ and can adequately you know, explain that and teach that to others. So I get to help them learn how to share their faith. And it's kind of the second stage in ministry, you know, looking to hand that off to others. The other area of ministry that I'm very involved in here is actually through our seminary as well, but with our diaconal training program. So we have, we're, we're training deaconesses in five countries right now. We have about 140 women in the program. Um, and I serve locally here as a mentor for the about 20 women here in the Dominican Republic. Um, and in addition to that, I've been involved with helping with curriculum development and writing of our course manuals. There's a lot of things to be involved in and, and very good work to be to be doing with uh, with the seminary and with your family there too, as well in the DR. John Carlos, I'm I'm curious about your training at the seminary. Can you can you tell us a little bit about your studies and um, what you get to do as a seminarian? Well, the study on the seminary is is local. <laughs> it's uh, it's nice because we have the time with a professor and at the same time uh, we have the time with the professor. They are a pastor in the congregation. So one thing like you can learn in the seminary, like you can put in practice in the church and at the same time uh, the, profess the professor can correct in the same way. And it's a good thing like we have a um, class at the morning and the uh, afternoon we have a uh, uh, we have uh, time for studies and and then we have time for uh, go to the church and doing some visitations. Here, put more attention in 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 the the work with the church to have a, a visitation with people, uh, with the congregation, and this is uh, one thing, a uh, big thing for me to learn. Because in Peru, it's very different, the culture, and they need to have, uh, I think, the same in USA, I don't know. But you can have the appointment first, and then you can check if that will be happening or not. But here, people are very, uh, um, I don't know. Laid back. Yes, <laughs> like you can go to the house, and you can visit and have extra coffee for you and have a time with talking with the family. Uh, this is so nice. The big thing for me was like uh, the old things that you can learn in the seminary. Now you can put in practice how to teach people that, uh, for example, if you we're talking about justification, how do you can talk with the people about this justification? Justification. Justification, sorry. With <laughs> people that they don't, in his life, in, in the life, they never listen about that word. So it's a hard word, but in the same time, it's a good word. Like you can learn better that theology 
in my opinion. What are your your hopes uh, following seminary? Uh, it sounds like you're really enjoying your education and your your formation at the seminary. What are you looking forward to post seminary? Uh, um, to return to Peru and to well, the time in Peru or the in Peru, the work is a mission. So we have the work to open more churches. So here we have the experience in that way. Like here is a mission too for 10 years in the Dominican Republic and they are starting and starting missions. So it will be easy for me when I return to Peru uh, to start in church, a little church. Okay. What actually goes into um, to planting those mission churches? Uh, I know you're, you're learning some of that in the DR. Um, what will that be like in Peru, planting those mission churches? Oh, uh, well, we start with members to go for uh, families uh, in Peru. Well, I can talk about Peru in the ways like you can go with the families and talking about how they go. Well, if you stay in the store, you can stay present with uh, with the people when you would like to uh, open a church uh, presentation to the school, to the police officers, to the uh, fire, wait, firemen, firemen, and to they know that you are there. They have a lot of respect for people who are religion in Peru in the way that you are for there, and they can call you when they have some problems, uh, if they need something to. So we are talking in that way, like uh, we can um, help in a way, like we can uh, go. Um, uh, talking about um, evangelism day uh, in the same way that we are uh, with day. So they, it's a lot of things, more things here in, 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 in Latin America when people know that you are there. It's like, it's, 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 it, it, they say like, uh, we can look like Catholic people, but in the same way they say that, no, because, uh, uh, Pope or, or or no, a Catholic people don't go to the house. They don't have a visitation. They don't stay for day. And now, when they say the Luther people, they can stay like a family with day. They can, if you can call, they remember your baptism or something like this. So these kind of things um, help the people to understand how is the good pastor, the good shepherd, to is Jesus with with his with his body, with the, with the church. So it's in the way that we can open a church. So they we start with short things like study Bibles in the house, uh, uh, to stay with more families right there. And they will come start with a little service like, uh, what come? Get like a service. chapel service in the house. And they start like this. It's not like, um, it's not a way like, okay, we found a place and we can put a church at the church and start like that. No, because it's only the building, but it's not people. So we understand that the church is the people in the way like God coming for that people, for that church. Um, I was going to add that I, I think it's so great that he, you know, highlighted and hit on that it's about the people. Um, whenever we do anything, be it, you know, we're going to try to um, serve the community in this way, or we're going to have this evangelistic project, the way to really, you know, change it from just here's a project to being able to have the church is by making those connections with individuals, um, working on discipleship with them, and then letting them be the evangelist to introduce us to their neighbors neighbors or their family members and invite those people to come to church and hear this good news that they have. Um, in Latin America, the confianza or the trust is really important. So once you build the relationship with one person, then they bring others along and they say, hey, this person, you know, they're the ella es de confianza. She's trustworthy. And then that open the, opens the door wide for them to listen to what you're saying about Jesus and, and respect it. But if you don't have that confianza and that trust, then they kind of just write you off and ignore you. 
so much to learn about in uh, the the Lord's work in the Dominican Republic. We're talking with Deaconess Caitlin and Seminarian John Carlos Ramirez about uh, the ways that the Lord has given them to serve in the Dominican Republic. We'll continue that conversation in just a moment. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today we're talking with Deaconess Caitlin and Seminarian John Carlos Ramirez, serving the Lord in the Dominican Republic. And uh, I've just enjoyed learning so much about um, what you're learning and <laughs> what you're experiencing there in the culture. I know Sarah had a more specific question about about relationships. Go ahead, Sarah. Well, yeah, because uh, you're talking so much about um, about meeting people and meeting people where they are and really learning about them. Can you talk a little bit more about that role of relationship building in your service in the DR and then in the future in Peru? Yeah, so um, I I guess it's a, always such a blessing um, because when we, when we came into the work here in the Dominican Republic, the church was already um, kind of established here and there were already missionaries. And so as I was talking about that confianza, that trustworthiness, when I got here, you know, there were already church members um, and other missionaries who kind of introduced me and said, you know, hey, she's trustworthy, you know, listen to her. And so a lot of the groundwork was kind of done already for me in that way here. Um, you know, and it, and it's such an, an honor and a blessing to receive that because I'm not trustworthy or of confianza because of who I am. You know, it's not Caitlin Ramirez, the person um, who likes to read books and, you know, do this or that. It's, it's Caitlin, the deaconess, who's here as a representation of Christ being sent by him and his church. And so it's really, it's, the, the trustworthiness, you know, and, the, and that faith then is in Christ. And I am just, uh, I, I get the honor to be covered over in that and, and included in that. Mm-hmm. And in the same way to respect the seminarians here in Dominican Republic, there will be many times that the police stop us uh, when we drive or something. They say, oh, go in a good way. Thank you for stay here in that country or uh, pray for me or something like that. So they have respect for for the for uh, I don't know for future pastor or for uh, the religion in this country in that way. The past year has certainly presented challenges with uh, the pandemic and uh, other things happening over the past year. What challenges have you faced in the Dominican Republic? And uh, how has that impacted the ways you're given to serve? Well, we're talking about, uh, I would say that um, it's a good thing that we have the the internet and many things to listen for the radio in that case on the internet. But in the same way, we can listen uh, bad things, uh, uh, things that we, we don't, uh, we think that it's good, but in the same way, it's, it's bad. Um, but in the same way, the difficult things I think is like uh, to put put attention in that way. Uh, people will like uh, it's 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 a good difficult because people will have some uh, questions about that. So we need to pay attention in that way. Um, explain that through. Um, in that way, we uh, say know what the people say or know what Giancarlo say or know what the pastor says, but we'll say what the Bible say about that. What the Bible say about, I don't know, uh, many difficult to happen in the 
in 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 I don't know in the society or many things like that. So uh, it's a difficult thing, but in the same way, it's a good thing to remind where we trust or where we go when we don't know what's going on. I I think maybe in some specific examples that have happened over the last year for year for us, um, it's been hard in evangelism as far as having activities and meeting brand new people, um, bringing them into the church. One thing that I'm really involved in here is children's ministries and our uh, Sunday school children's ministry was evangelistic that we did it um, on Saturday mornings. We walk through the neighborhood, find the kids that were playing in the streets and invite them into church to, you know, color and have a craft and hear a Bible story. And then afterwards, follow up with visitation to their families. And because of the pandemic and people's fear of being with those they don't know, um, we haven't really been able to do that very successfully. Um, on the flip side, though, of that and that difficulty, I think over the last year, we've seen um, that we've really been able to work uh, with the members and those who are already in the church and really seeing a lot of growth in them, in their, their spiritual, you know, their understanding, their trust in the Lord, um, and, and clinging to him that while it's kind of, um, narrowed down the flock, if you will, you know, those who are just kind of there, you know, and interested, you know, on the fringes, um, maybe are not there right now. Those who are, ha are really have a very, very strong faith um, and are being prepared to give a much better witness to those around them. Mm -hmm. What other uh, highlights or, or blessings uh, have you seen in the last year, the ways that the Lord has provided for for both of you and your family and uh, the seminarians there and the, the church in the DR? One thing for us personally um, is that we have a, a new daughter and I was able to give birth in the States. Um, that took me away from the field here in the Dominican Republic for uh, about six months. But because of the work that I have with the seminary and our diaconal students, um, I was able to continue working on writing courses and overseeing women in other countries and things and, and be able to continue work working while we were in the States for birth and then for her to get all of her paperwork and documents afterwards. So that's a, a personal blessing for our family. Okay. One kind of things was like, um, because, well, in the work here in Dominican Republic, it's in the way that we say with the families, like devotion every day is to uh, have a call with the people and the same way uh, learning in you know, a blessing for us to understand how is God with his with his um, flock or his people his people um, in the in a way to be patient too because here in Dominican we don't know where uh, you need to say all time your house um, in the way like uh, we don't know when when that finish or when that will be done or something, but uh, the, we uh, pray for that and say in a way like uh, say with the people to understand the people in that way to be patient. How can we follow your story and continue to learn about what's happening with the Ramirez family in the Dominican Republic and and uh, life at the seminary and uh, how the church is continuing to grow there in the, in the Dominican Republic? Yeah, a, a great way is through Facebook. Um, our seminary has uh, their uh, Facebook page that can be followed. Um, and we as a family um, have the Ramirez family, your missionaries. You can find us on Facebook and we try to um, put lots of photos and, you know, stories of, of the work and things that are going on. Um, in addition there, you can also then sign up, send me an email at caitlin.ramirez at lc um, and uh, get on our newsletter lists um, and those then come out every month uh, and you know for any churches out there anyone we would love to uh, share with all of you and you know have a chance to answer some questions and share a little bit more in detail about our work 
Our guests today, Deaconess Caitlin and Seminarian Giancarlos Ramirez, serving the Lord in the Dominican Republic. Thanks so much for being our guests on The Coffee Hour. Thanks for having us. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Da, 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 da.